Welcome to Leewood Prez on this rainy day. If I haven't had a chance to meet you, my name is Ryan Kappel. I'm so glad you're here on this graduation Sunday. We have 20 seniors who call LPC home, and we're celebrate milestone. By way of a call to worship, you know, Moses at the age of 90, in chapter 90 of the book of Psalms, in Psalm 90 verse 12, he said, teach us, O Lord, to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. With that, will you stand as we continue to worship God through music?
is powerful to declare those words today. Uh, the great good news of Jesus is that wherever we have failed, wherever we are, um, we're wallowing in, um, in pain, in problem, in struggle, wherever sin, uh, wherever sin is in our lives, that um, that place, that dead place is brought to life, raised to life through the power and the blood of Jesus. And so as we declare that today, uh, in this place, what a beautiful and powerful, just powerful thing to be in a community and a family declaring that. And just knowing that he is covering all of us. He's covering our families. He's covering our homes. It's incredible. And so we just want to lift up this song. This is kind of a theme song for today, the blessing. And so if you know it, sing along and, um, and lift it up as a prayer uh, over not only our graduates, but just all of our families and all of the people that we know and love and that we're praying uh, will come to faith in Jesus. We just want to lift this up and just pray, pray this as a blessing today. Lord, bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you. Yeah. 
thank you, Jesus, for this moment. Thank you for uh, all that you're doing in this community and this family. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. And we just pray and lift these songs up to you today, Jesus, uh, as we hear from your word, as we uh, do a blessing uh, of our own ascending today. We just thank you, Jesus, for, uh, for all of your blessings. Great name we pray, sing, hope, amen. I'm going to call up the seniors who are graduating up on stage. So if you guys want to come on up. Um, if you didn't know, today is our graduation Sunday. And uh, we get the opportunity, the blessing to bless these students as they go out into their next stage of life. And it's a big, big stage of life where they go from being in the nest to out uh, at their colleges, their campuses, their work lives, whatever they're doing, uh, more so on their own. And so we want to bless them. I'm going to share a few words, but before we do that, I'm going to pass the mic around, have them share uh, where they're attending, uh, what they're doing next year, and what they're majoring in. Their name? You want to give your name? Yeah. All right. What do you do? Name, where you're going to school, and what you're majoring in, just so everybody kind of knows who's up here. All right, my name is Charles James Jobson. I'm going to Grand Canyon University, and I'm going to be majoring in business and management. My name is Rhett Wallace. I'm going to Arkansas University. I'll be majoring in business. I'm Breck McGuire. I'm going to the University of Kansas. I'll be majoring in mechanical engineering. I'm Brian Henniger. I'm attending the University of Arkansas, and I'll be majoring in public relations. Um, I'm Ashley Garvrick. I'm going to the University of Oklahoma, and I'm majoring in preoccupational therapy. I'm Kenna Finlayson, and I'm going to Baylor University. I'm going to be majoring in nutrition. I'm Lily Nelson, I'm going to Kansas State University, and I'm majoring in Wildlife and Outdoor Enterprise Management. Um, I'm Lauren Swift, and I'm going to Kansas State University, and I'm majoring in, like, business. I'm Anna Kramer, I'm going to the University of Arkansas, and I'm majoring in psychology. I'm Lucy Schramm. I'm going to the University of Arkansas as well, and I'm majoring in psychology with a minor in Spanish. Uh, I'm Will Nave, and uh, I'm, I think I'm kind of undecided on where I'm going and also on what I'm majoring in. Sorry, sorry for the uh, indecisive answer. But... That's awesome. Um, so I... A few words, and I'll first say that this class um, holds a special place in my heart and in my family's life. Um, I got very emotional at the last high school youth group, and a lot of that was probably due to uh, these students up here, just because um, it's not just that I've developed friendships and bonds <clears throat> with these students, but they've developed friendship with my wife and with my kids, who I love <laughs> very dearly. I'm going to get emotional again. <laughs> so uh, so I, I absolutely love this class. When we took this job, this was a group that took us in um, and made us feel like they loved us. They supported uh, what we were trying to do and invited their friends and um, just jumped all in. And there's nothing better in youth ministry than when you feel like you have partners. Um, so I am super, super thankful for this class. I'm so Lucky uh, to have gotten to know them, to hang out with them, to spend time with them. And my, I'll keep it short, but my, my and I shared this at uh, our last youth group, but again, I got very emotional, so who knows what anybody actually heard. Um, but uh, my, my, my biggest piece of advice, my biggest encouragement to you guys is that Jesus is worth it. It's really simple. Um, you are about to go off to college and there are going to be maybe a billion things seeking your attention and seeking um, your uh, heart, your mind, your soul, right, everything. This world wants everything of you, and, and it's really hard. And, and I went through this. I still go through this today 
of just sometimes wondering, is it worth it to follow Jesus? Is it worth it to lay my life down <clears throat> for Jesus? And I can 100% say that, yes, it's worth it. Uh, even through the darkest times of my life, um, I can still look back and go, like, it has been worth it to follow Jesus. And I would encourage you guys um, to know that, to know that, again, you are about to go into college and, and make your own decisions, make your own lives, be um, your own people. And you're going to be swarmed by things, even some good things, that will tell you, hey, this is what's most important in life. But I will tell you uh, 100% that Jesus is way more worth it than anything else the world has to offer. Um, and so I encourage you guys to know that. And I encourage LPC to remind them that. Um, because it's really easy, especially in college sometimes. I remember my freshman year at times just feeling so lonely and so lost. Um, and I was lucky enough to have parents, leaders, ministry leaders who reminded me that, no, it's worth it to stick through with Jesus. It is worth it <clears throat> every single minute of every single day. And, and, and that kind of leads me into my second point it, it, Second encouragement for you guys is find biblical community. Priority number one, if I were to tell you, hey, what should I do when I get to college, is go find people that love Jesus and want to love you and share Jesus with you. Um, I, again, was lucky enough to find a, a ministry at K-State that loved me, supported me, leaders that cared for me, and, and it was an amazing four years of my life. And it was because I had people that loved me, but loved Jesus way more than they loved me, and pointed me towards Jesus. And so um, I want you to know that it's there. Uh, you probably are going to campuses where you th it might be tough to find that community, but I would encourage you to, to, to do it, to fight through, to say, hey, no, it's worth it. Um, Paul talks about, I mean, Scripture talks about community, oh, time and time again, of just the, the body being important to us. Uh, as individuals, but as a group, as a church community. And so I leave you guys with that. I, I do love you all very, very much, and you have meant a lot to me, and so I'm really thankful um, for you guys. And I just pray uh, we want to, I want to bring Ryan up and Doug, and honestly, anybody who wants to come lay hands on these students and just pray a blessing over them as they go into their next stage. Um, and because we love you guys and we want what's best and we know that Jesus wants what's best for you. So if Ryan wants to come up, any Doug, our, our youth elder, um, and we can circle up here and pray for you guys and just bless you. Um, I'll have Ryan open us and then I can close us in prayer. Um, but again, thank you guys. We love you and, and we uh, know God has huge, awesome plans for you, all of you. Hey, and also let's give it up for Kevin and his leadership for these students. As you know, this is his last day. It's a new milestone and transition for him as well alongside the students, which makes it emotional. Tonight at 730, there's a farewell fire pit gathering. Hopefully it doesn't rain, uh, but in the red door or if that's, that's plan B. But, so we're praying for both the transition of the graduates and the transition of Kevin and Allison and Lewis and Mabel. So I'll, I'll pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of each student and the gift of each parent planting faith in their hearts. And we affirm the truth of Scripture that when parents raise their children in the way of the Lord, even when wandering occurs, and we've all wandered, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I know and love, as the old hymn says. But you are faithful to draw us back. And as Kevin exhorted these students, may they find Christ-centered community to draw them closer to you, to abide in Christ, to stay close to Jesus. We continue to pray blessings upon Kevin and Allison and Lewis and Mabel in their next chapter of life. And thank you for the impact they've had on the families and students of this church that forever will be a part of the story of LPC. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Father, thank you so much for these students, for this group. Um, just pray a blessing over them that this next stage of life would not be um, filled with <clears throat> anything but you and anything but goodness and your love, and just pray that they would find community, find people that love them well and love Jesus, and that they could cling to that and thrive in that, and 
Um, just pray that they, again, would know that you are worth it, even when it's dark and seems lonely and scary, um, that you promise us a crown of righteousness at the end of the race. You promise us life. Um, you promise us life to the fullest. So I pray for these students just that they would um, be safe in their new endeavors, but also uh, would know you more and more every day. We love you, and we pray all this in your name. Amen. 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 Quick pick. Oh, quick picture. So let's get a picture right here. If parents want to come take a picture real quick. So you guys got to get like tight. Real quick, real quick. Come on. Oh, my gosh. All right, we're good. Yes. My man Will is speaking truth, by the way. Some of y'all still don't know what you're majoring in in life, I mean, or where you're going, and that's good. I love that. Hey, also, by way of exciting times, it's fun to see Anna Kramer and Lily Nelson up here, who just who graduating from high school and moving on, and my daughter Avery, who's home from her freshman year of college, along with Jane Ford. You know, they, as students in our youth group, were pouring into the next generation, the younger students, the middle school students, and then passed the baton to Anna and uh, Lily, and we want to keep that going, and this summer, they're going to be interning, Jane and Avery and a guy named Jake Holdhusen will be our summer youth interns to carry on the tradition of ministry and investment in the next generation, and that's exciting, so we love the next generation. We say at LPC, the goal of each generation is the faith of the next generation. If you're trying to find a purpose, there it is. The purpose of each generation is the faith of the next generation. So let's go before God in prayer, and after the Lord's Prayer, kids will be dismissed to their environments to grow closer and deeper with Jesus. God, thank you for the love and grace that you give us through your son, Jesus. And in these times of transition, these milestones for the students that are graduating, both high school, college, and and just the reflections of our own lives, no matter what age and stage we're in, we look back on our own graduation, and there are regrets. There are moments of shame, and some of us are still carrying that with us today. So we come before the cross where Jesus took all of our sin and shame, and he took it to the grave. And then when he rose from the dead, he was no longer wearing the sin and shame that we carried. So may we give that to you now. We confess our sins of commission and sins of omission. God, we thank you that you are faithful and just to forgive us of all unrighteousness. And there's a freedom there to participate fully in the ministry of reconciliation. When we confess our sin to you, then you set us free to be more powerful in our prayers for the healing and reconciliation of others. Because this world needs healing and reconciliation. God, we lift up our prayer family of the week. Michael McClanahan, may he feel your grace and love knowing that his church family is lifting him up as he is a blessing. He's been blessed, and he is a blessing in our community and beyond. And God, we lift up Australia to to you. May the gospel take root there, knowing that this story of Jesus is for the world, not just here in Leawood, Kansas, but the world, that the world may know. So we want to be faithful to proclaim and perform the gospel right here where we are and pray for the world to know Jesus. And now when we don't know what to pray or how to pray. We pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Kids, you're dismissed to your environments to go and grow. By way of a quick announcement, it saddens my heart that sweet Christine Crippen passed away this last week. And 
I'll be partnering with Father Storia Curie to do the service at 1030 on Friday. She was a faithful saint who prayed for this very thing, children. When there were no children at Leewood Press for decades, she prayed that there would be children. And so this is a result of her faithful prayers. And she battled dementia for many years, and now she's been set free and is more alive now than ever. And so that's, uh, that service is at 1030 this Friday at Curie. Her husband, Kent Crippen, former mayor of Leewood in the 80s, has been a member at Curie for decades, and that's where that's going to be. Well, I was talking to my son, Mason, who's a junior. He's about to take the MCAT this Thursday. And I, I know, pray, if you don't know what to pray for, pray for that. I, an eight-hour test? Are you kidding? I don't even understand. But he was talking about some of his fight out brothers who have graduated and saying how rough it is out there. I mean, it's rough out there trying to, you, you saw the hopes and aspirations of, of these young men and women who have their, their majors picked out. And you might think, oh, that's cute that you picked out a major. Uh, it may change a dozen times. Or, or you hear engineering, like Breck's talking about engineering, like that's a shirt, that's a shoe-in. So Mason, one of his fraternity brothers is like, I, I, I majored in engineering, and it's just rough. I, the only job, I, I got a job, and it's like, he's like, Mason's like, good, I'm glad. But it's at the zoo. And, and it's like, all right, hang on. He goes, I got loans. I have debts to pay off. I got to take this job. And he goes on to tell Mason, but it got weird when I got there. My boss came to me and said, now, this is a little different job. You're not just taking tickets. You've got to put on this gorilla outfit because the gorillas are sick. And you've got to keep the kids happy. And I need you dancing around. And he was like, oh, my gosh, what have I gotten myself? I'm an engineer. Man. Breck, this could be your future. <laughs> but you've got to do what you've got to do, right, to pay off those debts. Because college, is it getting cheaper? I don't, I don't know. I got two of them. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, don't talk about ROI. The, de- the dads start talking about, like, college is the worst ROI. Anyway. And then you want to be an influencer. Is that a major? I thought underwater basket weaving was the equivalent of an influencer or YouTuber. Anyway. So it's like, all right, he puts it on. He's like, day one, he's kind of dancing around. Day two, day three, he's kind of getting into it. And the kids are loving it. They have no idea it's a fake gorilla. He's dancing. He's swinging from the trees. We got so into it. He swung so high and far from the tree, he landed accidentally into the lion's den. And the lion started running after him. And at this point, he starts screaming, help! And there ain't nothing good about a talking ape, right? I mean, the... The kids are freaking out that the, the, the ape is talking, and the, the lion pounces on him, and he goes, hey, if you don't show up, we're both going to lose our jobs. I mean, it's rough out there, guys. I'm just saying. you got to be prepared to do anything. I don't care what your major is. It is rough. Okay, so disclaimer, none of that was real. Just wanted to be very clear in case you're wondering. But what I do want to talk about briefly are five road rules for life, not just for you graduates, really for all of us, because we're all in a season of life. We tend to think of the big seasons like graduation, and we forget that, yeah, of course we grew up like your goal is to leave fifth grade and go to sixth grade. I mean, now we actually have graduations for everything. Do you you realize how crazy, like, now you're graduating from sixth grade. I think we had higher aspirations than really making a big deal out of sixth grade, let alone high school. I'm like, High school, very good. No, anyway, I'm playing. I'm, I'm loving it. But do you feel like it's going over the top? Are grad parties out of control? Is anybody feeling the same? Okay, maybe it's just me. You're like, our pastor's a little angry right now. <laughs> anyway, my point is this. We should celebrate milestones because our whole life was meant to advance to the next season. But when we get out of school, we tend to forget that there are seasons of life. So the road rules of life. Now, if you're a child of the 90s, you're thinking of that MTV show, right? Road rules, maybe. I don't know what you're thinking of, road rules. But you know that in life, you have been given in your car along life your rearview mirror, but you do not actually have a reverse in life. You cannot redo your senior year unless maybe, some, I don't know, one of you maybe are. You cannot redo your senior year. You cannot redo your 20s. You cannot redo that first marriage. You cannot redo parenting that first child or the season or phase that you're in. We know this all too well. There's a reason why the rearview mirror is much smaller than the windshield. you got to keep moving forward. We are not made to go in reverse. In fact, we're not given a reverse. So five road rules for life to thrive, to make it through life, and all the transitions that come your way. The first one, and Kevin really alluded to it, and that is, Don't do life alone. Don't travel alone. We were not made to be alone. We talked about this in the Trinity, the doctrine of the Trinity. 
We are made in the image of God, and God is three in one. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We are made for a community, and specifically Christ-centered community. Don't do life alone. And during the pandemic, it's so easy to be isolating, and in fact, you might feel like it's easier to isolate. But don't succumb to that temptation to isolate. Stay connected in Christ-centered community. That's where you become the best version of yourself, or another way to say it is to live life according to Christ's likeness, to look like Christ, to grow in the likeness of Christ. And we're, we're, we're particularly susceptible to transitions. You guys are about to go off to campus somewhere, and, and it's in those transitions that you are we as humans are susceptible to connect to people who just accept us. Don't fall prey to the first group that accepts you. We are acceptance magnets, and you and I can tell stories all night long about the worst things we've ever done are because certain groups accepted us, and the best things we've ever done are because of certain groups accepting us. That's the thumbprint of God in our soul to be acceptance magnets. God already accepts us. May you go toward not the first group that accepts you, but a Christ-centered community that accepts you. And again, this isn't just for this, the high school graduates. It's for the adults in the room. Maybe you need to pay attention to who you are drawn to or gravitating toward. Are you going to the first group of friends that accepts you? So don't travel alone. And know this, that it's not just about interests, about, oh, we eat the same food, drink the same coffee, listen to the same music. By the way, how many of you are still listening to MC Hammer? I mean, your music tastes change. Although, oh, Scott Blair, I see that hand. I see that hand. I knew that was going to be a setup there. But the point is this. Don't just follow people's tastes that are similar. Connect with people's values that are similar. A value are those predetermined values or things that you know that is most important to you. you when you're around people that share the same values, like a love of Jesus, then you know that, and if, you, if they are loving Jesus, that means they're loving themselves, right? We are called to love God, love others, and we are made in the image of God, so we are called to love ourselves. That's a three experience of love. Love God, love others, and love yourself. We talk about this as soul care, self-care, soul care. Take care of yourself. When others are taking care of themselves, then they'll take care of you. If you've got their back, they'll get your back. So have those shared values. Don't just draw to the connections of similar tastes. Proverbs is an anchor passage. Proverbs 13, 20 in the ESV says this, Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise. So wisdom is just acknowledging that everything in life is connected. And the older you get, how many of you know this truth? The older you get, the more you realize everything and everyone is connected. So that when you do something, say your freshman year in college, and you think you're not connected to anyone or anything, you realize the good and the bad can come back in a powerful way. Because everything we do is connected. That's wisdom. The foolish person doesn't acknowledge that the things we do today are connected to others and for generations that will reverberate. We must realize that wisdom is knowing everything is connected. So whoever walks with the wise becomes wise. But then there's this contrast. But the companion of fools will suffer harm. Now, I've had this conversation with my own kids. Maybe you've thought this yourself. If it says, Hey, if you are a a friends with wise, you'll become wise. That's what, the, that's what Solomon says. The wisest man who ever lived said this. And then it says, but if you are with these fools, you will suffer harm. I've had my kids say, like, Dad, I'm not going to automatically do what everybody else is doing at that party or event or whatever. Have you ever had this conversation? Maybe this is too awkward. Like, I can't tell you publicly. But the point of what Solomon is saying is that you may not do the things that they are doing, but guess what? When you're with them, wrong place, wrong time. That's the wisdom of that statement. The shrapnel of your friend's decision hits you. And the bigger the problem, the bigger the pain. You may not be doing what they're doing, but the second their lives blow up, guess what? You're right next to them. So it's not, it doesn't mean that you become foolish when you're around the foolish. It means you suffer the harm of the foolish decisions of those around you. Again, anybody feeling preached to right now that's not just 18 and graduating from high school? This is all of us. This principle doesn't go away. Number two, you're keeping track, right? Five, like how long is it going to take? Don't pick up strangers. How's that one? 
Don't pick up strangers. What's my definition of strangers? People who are strange. How's that? Is that does that work? Just people who are strange. Okay, we're all strange. We're all strange to someone. But the point is this. Don't pick up people in your life, in your car, although I have a story about Amy and I in college. We took a little road trip. We weren't even dating. This should have been a sign to her to not hook up. That's the wrong word. I've always been told. Don't say that word. Anyway. <laughs> Dang. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I know there are phrases I'm not supposed to say, and I was just thinking of, <laughs> anyway, so we drove to Topeka to see her family, and on the way back from Topeka to Manhattan, I picked up a stranger, I mean, it was late at night, he's carrying a trash bag, what could go wrong? I'll have to tell that story later, maybe on Facebook or something, I don't know, but don't pick up strangers, strangers are people who are, I say stranger than you, they're the people that make you suddenly second guess your own identity. You know who you are. You're a son and daughter of God. You know you're called to love God and love others, but suddenly these people on this road trip of life are making you feel strange, and you start living a duplicitous life. James talks about this. Don't be double-minded. It divides us. We are not made to be divided. That's why we love God and others with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We love others like we love ourselves. That takes devotion, complete, sold-out devotion, not being divided. So strangers are people that make you second-guess who you are and what your values are. Don't pick up strangers on the road to life. Now, the, the kickback to this, and I've taught this to teenagers for years, it's like, but aren't we supposed to love everybody? Yes, love them, but guess what? You can't handle them. Love them, but you can't handle them. Give them over to God who loves them more than you do. Yes, we're supposed to love everyone. Yes, we're supposed to be kind to everyone. But look, if there are people taking you away from the love of God and others, love them, but you can't handle them. Give them over to Jesus. For their sake and your sake, give them over to Jesus. Because they need this balance, maybe reconnection with God, or faith in Christ alone. So yes, of course, love everyone. But sometimes we are not in a phase or season of life to handle them. Give them over to Jesus. Rule three, choose a destination and borrow a map. Choose a destination and borrow a map. Andy Stanley famously said this, your direction determines your destination. My daughter Annie is actually flying home tonight from Rosemary Beach because she, Annie the Nanny, she's nannying the Noe's, our, our family in our church, because Trevor's brother just got married on Rosemary Beach. Oh, isn't that a lovely destiny? Wouldn't you like to be there right now amidst the storms? And she's, a a Annie's living her best life. At any rate, what I know is if I were to get in the car and jump on I-35 north and I wanted to go to Rosemary Beach, I mean, I want to be at Rosemary Beach so badly. She's been posting, you know, it's, uh, I, you know I'm, I'm, I'm hate liking her post that she has, right? It's my own daughter. I want to be there. I desire to be there, but if I get in my car and start driving on I-35 I North, will I end up in Rosemary Beach? No. I'll be in Canada. I mean, nobody wants to be there, right? We I, I, that came out wrong, too, by the way. Shaq, you're going to have to scrub several things that I've said on the interwebs. Um, oh, my gosh. You get what I'm saying. Your intention is not what matters. Your direction determines your destination. So move in the direction of loving God and loving others and have people who are going along that path with you. Another way to say it is discipline, not desire, determines destiny. So we've been hitting all kinds of grad parties like you all have, right? And I'm not bitter because they're actually awesome celebrations of life. And it's great to reconnect with families and parents that we've shared life with. But man, you start to reflect on how fast time flies. How could my little children already be either in college or about to graduate, you start reflecting on how life goes by so fast. Well, Amy and I were thinking back on as we were passing by the Blue Valley baseball fields where we spent many a weekend with Mason, and Allie was in the back seat. This is just yesterday, and Allie's like, yeah, pretty much every weekend of my life was spent at a baseball field watching Mason. We're still going through therapy with that whole process. Have you ever had that where you're like, Leading, I'm kidding, there's no therapy going on, but no, she loved it, new friends and all these things, but quickly you start to realize 
Look, there are seasons of life where you've got to stay devoted. And I'm not talking about being devoted to baseball, but devoted to raising your kids. And the line that we should be focused on today is to say, hey, look, I am focused on this. Like Nehemiah was on the wall, rebuilding the wall, and he was being attacked by both friends and foes. And he said, not now. Not now. I am not going to come down right now. You all are on a ladder building a wall of raising your kids, investing in the next generation, and you need to say, no for now, but not forever, because there will be a new season. No for now, but not forever. There will be a season when we can let go or come out of that season and enjoy maybe a different aspect of life, whether it's raising your adult kids. How many are in that phase? Empty nesters, parenting adult kids, that's a thing. We need help. We need encouragement. The second part of that is to borrow someone else's map. So I had the privilege about three years ago to learn from Jim Burns. He's like the father of youth ministry on the, uh, on, in L.A., in Orange County. And he had Doug Fields, who was a kid in his youth group, and Doug has become a, a, an author and a guru of youth ministry. And he has this whole lesson plan on parenting adult children. These are tools we'd like to pursue in the fall here at LPC to help those of you who are in the phase and season of parenting adult children. Because guess what? There's a map that's already been written. And we need to borrow someone else's map. You guys going off to campus, connect with the seniors that have been there. Connect with seniors. Or my son's about to be a senior. That, that whole class, there are about 20 students from our church who are going to be seniors in college next year. Reach out to them. Get advice and counsel for them. Borrow their map. And some guys, at whatever age and stage of life you are, you think that it's weakness to ask for help. But it's maturity. It's maturity when we actually stop and ask for help. You might know what the Vernon Law is. It says this. Experience is a hard teacher because she gives the test first and the lesson afterward. Get the map from someone else who's been there. Get help from others. Proverbs 19.20 says this. Listen to counsel. And accept discipline, that you may be wise the rest of your days. If your pattern and habit is to listen to anybody and not say like, oh, I've got a better education than that person, or I'm smarter than that person, then you'll stay wrong. You will stay wrong. But if we listen to anybody and everybody at any given time looking for truth, you know, seeking counsel, then we will gain wisdom. We will gain a heart of wisdom. P.S., say yes today. Emily Finlayson, our children's director, is asking you to say yes to the next generation. As I said, the goal of each generation is the faith of the next generation. You have a map that you can give to other parents with younger kids. So some of you are tempted to say, oh, been there, done that. Already did my time. No, no, no. We need you older parents now more than ever to help out the younger parents. You have a blueprint. What I have discovered is that I don't know how much I know until people start asking me questions and Amy and I realize, hey, we're kind of smart because we've done a lot of stupid things in our parenting over our, you know, 20, almost 22 years as Mason turns 22 this summer. And so there's a lot of wisdom there that we can pass on to the next generation, not out of arrogance or pride, but the next generation needs your help. Rule number four, pay attention to the signs. Pay attention to the signs. Proverbs 27, 12 says this, the prudent or the wise see danger and take refuge. Pay attention to the signs. Now, when I got arrested, I mean, just, just process that a little bit. When I got arrested, speaking of my daughter being a summer intern, when I was a summer intern at Colonial Presbyterian Church, in the name of ministry with three other teenage kids, we jumped the fence, ignoring the sign that said no trespassing at Super Splash USA. Two references to Scott Blair, by the way. Two references, because you know where Super Splash USA is. It was in your hood in Raytown. And at like midnight, when you know you're not supposed to be there, we jumped the fence to jump off the high dive and go down the water slide, only to get arrested because three previous nights it had been vandalized and stolen. I wasn't up to vandalize or steal anything. I just wanted to jump the fence and go off the high dive. I'm an innocent. Anyway, I've been expunged of all crimes. I just want you to know. Uh, But it did take Memorial Day weekend coming back from my fraternity house to wax on and wax off the water slides. That's a whole other story. But when we ignore the signs, guess what? We go the long way and often the wrong way. Pay attention to the signs in life. 
And it's people who are calling you out, saying, hey, you've got a problem with this. If more than one person is telling you you've got a problem, guess what? You've got a problem. Don't stay wrong. Lean into the signs that other people are telling. Another way the signs show up is when people say like, oh my gosh, don't bring that topic up around mom or dad. Does your family have that? Family secrets? That's called ignoring the signs. That leads us to the last and final and really heaviest, no pun intended, road rule, and that is don't carry unnecessary baggage. Don't carry unnecessary baggage. This idea that in life you will have baggage. You have hurt and pain. You graduates already have some baggage, and then old people like myself have a lot of baggage, and we're called to not carry unnecessary baggage. I'll never forget when I drove to Topeka, not the same trip where I picked up the stranger with the trash bag late at night, but when I drove to Topeka to ask Amy's dad, Tom Eddy, for permission to marry his daughter, he put, he, he, I'm sitting at the table, and I'm asking permission to marry his daughter, and he doesn't say a thing. He just gets up from the table and leaves. <laughs> Off to the side is my future mother-in-law, although I wasn't thinking future mother-in-law at all. And she's looking at me like, I don't know. I'm like, that's not helping. And what felt like in an eternity was just a couple minutes, and he came back with this huge three-ring binder that he plops down on the table. I'm like, oh, I thought I was in and out. I thought I had this made. We were friends, you know. We've hung out. You have fed me before. I've learned a valuable lesson. Getting fed doesn't mean anything. Anyway, so he goes through a list of questions, and here is the most poignant question that stuck out out of his 101 questions. It was this, is there anyone in your life that you haven't forgiven? Is there anyone in your life that you haven't forgiven? This is the unnecessary baggage of life that some of us carry. And in this world, you will have trouble, Jesus said, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Well, in that moment, I was able to actually honest answer honestly because just the week before Amy and I together, obviously we've been dating, we've been friends for many years and had been dating, we were talking through the dynamic with the relationship with my dad. And I had gone to my dad and stepmom, uh, you know, after the family blew up, you know, he had an affair with this woman, married her, and just blew up our lives. So it had been about 10 years since that happened. When Amy and I, through prayer and conversation, went to meet face-to-face with my dad and Betty, who is, Betty is now in heaven. She has since passed, uh, just 10 years older than me. Anyway, a whole other story. Already I'm like, wow, there's a lot of baggage there that you're announcing in this story. But the point is, is we got to sit face-to-face and confront, care front, confess, mutually confess, and give forgiveness. And then I was able to answer that question honestly to my father-in-law. Now, have there been moments of baggage, of unnecessary baggage? You bet. It is a constant checking of that baggage to the Lord. Give it to God. There's a great quote from Amanda Palmer who said this, if you don't deal with your demons, they go into the cellar of your soul and lift weights. Ooh, that is so true. If you and I don't deal with our demons, they go into the cellar and they just they are pumping away, getting stronger and bigger and stressing out your life. When we don't deal with our sin, our bitterness, our unforgiveness, it has a way of showing up in our present and our future. When we don't deal with our past baggage, it gets empowered to affect not just our lives, but everyone we're traveling with. And it doesn't just slow me down, it slows my wife down, my four kids down. You all know this. When we don't deal with that unnecessary baggage, it slows you down. And God wants to set you free. Now, some of you are like, you don't know my story. You're right. But here's what I know, is that you are made to be set free. It's not about fair. They don't deserve my forgiveness. Guess what? Neither do I. Because Scripture tells us, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That we might be set free. That we might live life with freedom. And so because God has forgiven us, we forgive others. Not because they're deserving. But because God has forgiven us through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection, we can forgive others. So I close with that. Well, I'm actually going to read what the Apostle Paul said in Ephesians 4.26. 
Be angry, but don't sin. Don't let the sun go down while you are still angry. Don't give the devil space. Another way to say it is don't give the devil space in your luggage. Are you carrying unnecessary baggage? Let it go. Give it to Jesus. Paul says, get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, along with every form of malice. It seems too simple, but here's what he says. By forgiving each other, this is how you set your baggage free, by forgiving each other. Just as God forgave you, Ephesians 4.32 says. Their debt no longer has to be your baggage. What they did to you, you may say, they owe me my first marriage. They owe me an education. They owe me a childhood. They can't give it back. They can't pay you back. So forgive them because you and the person who has offended you needs that forgiveness that God has given us and we can give to them. Will you stand as we close with our final worship song to be set free? God, I look to you I won't be overwhelmed Give me vision To see things like you do God, I look to you You where my help comes from Give me wisdom You know just what to do Now receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.
to you. Yeah. Kids are doing some. I don't know what's going on. I'm glad that the kids are doing some. We know they're having.
good.